Hello, in this video we're going to be exploring design failure mode effect analysis and how that is linked to the IATF 16949 standard. Uh, hello again, Devon. Hello, Dawn. Hi. Um, so, Devon, uh, is DFMEA applicable to all IETF certified organizations? No, it is only applicable to those that are design responsible. Right, okay, which is going to be a proportion of the 86,000 IETF certified organizations. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, Dawn, from an auditor perspective then, what should auditors know about DFMEA? Okay, so they would need to know about the different approaches that there are to a DFMEA and also have some level of competence in understanding the, these different approaches and what a DFMEA is and what it should do and what it shouldn't do. Right, okay. And Devon, what are some of those different approaches that auditors may see to creating a DFMEA? Yeah, so there's obviously various uh, DFMEA published uh, books out there. Uh, so yeah. we have AGVDA, um, yeah. new edition out. So that's uh, one approach, but yeah. there are still, there are older revisions that are still applicable. And specifically, um, some customers might want a specific one used. So once again, right, you'll check okay. those customer specifics. Right. So when we're auditing an organization, then it's back to the earlier video about customer specific requirements. We need to understand the customer specific requirements in terms of reference manuals to use uh, in implementing DFMEA. Okay. Dawn, maybe give me an example then of what are some of the co common problems found in audits with DFMEA? Okay, I think, I think one of the main problems is that we're not focusing on the design of the product yeah. and there's the temptation to drift on off into the PFMEA, yeah. which is the actual manufacturing process, rather than keeping it uh, focused on the actual design risks. Yeah, that's certainly something I've seen in, in doing audits. It almost becomes like a hybrid yeah. of the design risk versus the process risk. Yeah. And I guess the organisation has to block out any potential thought about what could go wrong in manufacturing and focus on what could go wrong in getting the design yeah. uh, correct. So I think that is a, a key point. Deva, maybe give me another example of of an issue. Yeah, so a lot of times it's not a team approach. So you're not getting the full competency of everyone that you need to make this the FMEA the way it should be. Yeah, and I think that again is a common problem that we might end up with lots of names on the templates, but have they truly been involved in the risk analysis? Um, Dawn, who, who should really then be involved in the creation of a DFMEA? I know there's no rule, but typically yeah. who, who would be involved? It should be um, a team approach. So it shouldn't just be the design, um, yeah. you know, the design engineers. It, it should be people from across the organization because they can have impact on those product risks. Yeah. So they, yeah. They, they might have knowledge that the designers maybe don't have. Yeah, okay, but typically, I guess, led by the organization design team. Yes. Supported by these other cross-functional uh, representatives. Absolutely. So it could be people from purchasing, manufacturing. Certainly, you would want manufacturing um, to get involved in the design. Yeah. Um, what should happen, Devon, then, to the DFMEA? Once it's been created, how should that then be communicated? Why is that important maybe to other functions in the organization? Right, so, well, obviously we want it to lead into the PFMEA yeah. as well. Um, but if for some reason there are product related concerns, they need to go back to that DFMEA yeah. and update it. Yeah. Uh, Dawn, any other issues that we haven't covered that are typically found with DFMEA? 
I, I think sometimes, unfortunately, we see it as a paperwork exercise. Yeah. So the worst possible scenario is that the design of the product is actually done and completed and then they start doing the design FMEA, which kind of, uh, you know, comes away from the whole point of it, which is identifying risks before we do the design. So it shouldn't just be uh, put together as a requirement of the product approval process yeah. just to tick that box that you have the DFMEA. Yeah. Yeah, so, no, it should be done uh, proactively rather than reactively. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and I think that is, is something that as auditors, we really do have to challenge the organisation on. Uh, is it created at the right stage of the new product development process? Yes. And yeah, not just <laughs> something that we're going to put in the part approval uh, to keep the customer happy. So let's summarise then. So DFMEA is a mandatory requirement for any design responsible organization who have that product design responsibility. Uh, it, the reference manual that the organization use will depend on customer specific requirements or if there are no customer specific requirements as defined by the organization. As we've discussed, there are many problems, I think, found in audits with the effective implementation of DFMEA. That could be because of uh, people competency, uh, not using a cross-functional approach, uh, not de clearly defined in the boundary and the scope of the DFMEA activity. And as Dawn said, it becomes being done very reactively not at the right stage of the new product introduction process.